Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to set up Go language on your system as well as we're going to set up PostgreSQL on your machines. And let's get started. So head over to golang.org and just choose the version from the downloads page. So since I'm using macOS, I'll be installing the PKG file. If you are on Windows, just download the uh, MSI installer. All right, once you have downloaded this and installed, uh, Go doesn't get added to your environments. So we have to add it to our, our system environment. On Windows, you have to add it to your system environments via path. Uh, so if you are on macOS, just open your terminal. So what I have to do is specifically, I'm going to open the bash file. In my case, since I'm using ZSHRC, I have to open the ZSHRC file and just, I'm going to use Sublime. You can use Nano Editor as well. So Sublime, open the root directory ZSHRC file into your favorite code editor. All right. Once you have opened the Sublime text, you have to add this two paths variables. So basically I'm exporting go path variable and path variable. So I'll explain you this one, what it is. So inside my root folder, that is my username, I have a folder called projects. Inside this project, I have this folder called go projects. Over here, I created three empty folders, bin, pkg and src. Then I have to just copy the path to this go projects. This is going to be your workspace. Just copy this path, specific path and export it as go path variable. After that, just copy paste this line. And what specifically I'm doing over here is I'm specifying a go projects folder. So all my projects in future, they are going to be inside the SRC. If I download certain packages uh, from internet, they will also go inside SRC and github.com and they will be over here. And you might be wondering how I got to know about this instructions. So it is also listed on documentations on Go language. And so this explains you uh, how you can set up your working environment. And this instructions are listed over here. So we have done just the same thing. Open your favorite code editor. In my case, I'm just going to use Visual Studio Code and it looks like this uh, so before opening visual studio code i'm going to go inside my src folder and just going to create a new folder over here called test that's it and just open this folder inside your code editor so go projects src and open the test folder currently it is empty it has nothing i'll just show you that the test folder is completely empty. Also to make sure everything has been installed correctly, I'm just going to type my Go version. Also, I'm going to type the Go path, go and just type dollar Go path. Yeah, it is listing the Go uh, path correctly over here. Then uh, what I have to do is in the terminal CD to your projects, Go projects, workspace, SRC and I'm just going to CD to the test folder, which is currently empty. All right. So inside this test folder, I'm going to create a new file over here called main.go. And just for, for fun, I'm just going to add a hello world kind of function over here. Uh, make sure you have to have a main function over here. That's a necessity. If you know about Go programming language, the basics, you have to have a main function. And I'm just going to over here print out FMT, print LN, and just say hello world. All right, then go to your terminal and type a command count go run main.go and hit enter. And it should work like this. So now what I'm going to do is via brew, I'm going to install Postgres. The way you install Postgres via brew is make sure you have already installed brew and just type brew update so that you have latest uh, repositories of brew gets added. And once you run the brew command, it will take time uh, depending on the things you have installed. Uh, as you can see, I have already installed Postgres. I'll just type brew list. And you can see I have installed Postgres, 
postgres sql already the way i have installed is just type brew install and type and just hit enter since i have already installed it i am not going to enter this command again but you get the point right and once you do this all you have to do is run the postgres service in the background so brew services start postgres ql and if i hit enter yes so you can see the postgres sql service has started successfully all right once the postgres sql has been installed in certain cases you might have to add the path to your zss rc or the bash file uh, in my case it was working fine but i'll still show you my uh, sublime text file at the bottom mm, i have added few aliases uh, this is uh, added for if you just don't want to uh, start the services from brew you can start it manually like this and uh, that's it uh, there is no additional path for postgresql i have added um, this is completely option optional if you don't want to use brew services all right the next thing which i have installed is postico so postico is a paid tool uh, but if you want it to use uh, for your personal use then it's completely free uh, just like open it like this and it it, you, it, it, will, it will allow you to connect to your uh, databases and uh, so let's just do a test connection to our postgresql uh, but before doing that so i have to show you few other things about the postgresql command line service that we just installed just type psql and type postgres it it lets you enter inside the pros postgresql uh, command line tool and just type backslash du it displays the database users and as you can see uh, it has currently by default it is using uh, my name as the main super user database user and just going to type wql to hit back all right so when you install postgresql by default uh, it doesn't set any password to set a password for the current user you have to type slash password and type the name of the user i'm going to type ajinkya burade and make sure you enter a semicolon at the end and hit enter when you hit enter like this it will ask you to set up a password and just enter the password uh, twice and you are done you, you are then you are good to go once you are done this you have to create a one more database over here so i'm going to just going to type create database gom and semicolon and hit enter okay all right once you have done this uh, just head over to your main file to use postgresql you have to download certain things so the main first the another main thing is you have to uh, download is the postgres library go get lit postgresql and hit enter all right after this you have to download the gom i'm sorry if you heard it wrong gorm it is go rm and uh, same thing uh, just hit enter for this one then hit enter for the gorm as well it will get downloaded to your src you can check it out over here it gets downloaded inside github then the username it's jinjitsu all right so you can see gorm is installed over here all right once you have this to install go to your main dot file main dot go file and we are going to uh, do a basic connection to our postgres database uh, which we just created we just created a database called gorm go rm going to create a variable called db then error if we have any errors and i'm going to inject the gorm the go rm variable so as you can see since i have already downloaded this go rm and my visual code is automatically de detecting that so just open the connection to the go rm so i'm specifying which type of connection i have to open i have to open a postgres database since we are opening a connection to the postgres we have to initialize the postgres database so this is like a quick shortcut and just remove this and we just download we just initialize the postgres dialect and just load it into your underscore so we are loading it but we are not referencing it all right so postgres connection then 
we have to enter the database details of our uh, database that we just created. So first of all, user is going to be Ajinkya Borade. The password, in my case, the password is password. I know that's so thoughtful. And the DB name, which we just created, it is GoRM. Also, there is a nifty trick when you are using this on your localhost, type SSL mode equal to disable. All right, which will show like if just try to omit this command and you will land upon a lot of errors. If error is not equal to nil, I'm just going to do a panic for now. Panic and whatever error we get, we just going to display it over here. Error. All right. Next is so I'm going to uh, close the database connection, but I'm going to defer that. So what happens with the defer command is so let's just type defer dot close. So this defer dot close will happen at the end of the main function execution. So it will defer this until we reach the last line of the main function. We have to connect to the database. I'm just going to create a database variable over here. So db dot db. All right. So I'm just going to uh, simply ping to the database. So just to see uh, the basic connection has been successful. Uh, I'll just store this into a variable as well. If there are any errors, database.ping. And if there are any errors, we'll just do a panic. All right, I have to do an error equal to over here. If everything is successful, we'll just print out. So we have to see this line, right? Let's just go to the terminal, go, run, main.go and hit enter. If everything is fine, you should see this line. Let's try to mimic an error over here. So I'm just going to remove this guy and enter the same command again. And you will see there is an error. All right, so just bring back that SSL mode disable and just try to enter the command again. And you should see PostgreSQL was connected successfully. And that's it from this video. If you have any comments, any suggestions for me, since I'm also learning Go language, please feel free to post it in comments. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.